morning students for first we take first sem in r19 regulation we have the subject engineering physics for the branches civil and mechanical in this subject we have second unit second unit have two chapters first chapter is acoustics so myself dr anupurna devi ch working as associate professor in the department of s and h from year like this today we are going to discuss sebeng's formula topic using growth and decay method we will derive the equation for uh, sebeng's equation for uh, reverberation time we will derive the equation for reverberation time in uh, that is called sebeng's formula using growth and decay method what is the formula for reverberation time t reverberation time is represented by capital t capital t is equal to 0.165 v by sigma as sigma as is also called total absorption capital a so here in this formula capital v is the absorption uh, capital in this formula capital v is the volume of the hall which is measured in meter cube capital a is the total sound absorption in the hall where capital a is sigma a s sigma a s is a1 s1 plus a2 s2 plus and so on an s n in this formula where a1 a2 and so on an or the absorption coefficients s1 s2 s3 and so on sn or their corresponding surface areas in meter square now we will derive the formula for reverberation time using growth and decay method what are the assumptions that sebeng had made before deriving this equation this equation one is first assumption is the room is large enough such that the sound energy produced is uniformly distributed in it he has he has assumed that the room is large enough the room is very large so that the sound energy produced inside that room is uniformly distributed in that room that is the first assumption and the second assumption is sound travels uniformly in all the directions the produced sound will be traveling uniformly in all the directions and the third assumption is absorption of sound by the air is neglected in the room air will be present the the sound absorbed by that air is neglected that is the third assumption so to derive the equation for reverberation time using growth and decay method we will follow three steps first step is determination of incident and absorbed sound energy rates in the first step we will determine what is the amount of sound energy incident incident and next we will calculate what is the amount of sound energy absorbed in that incident energy that is the first step in the second step we will calculate growth and decay of that sound energy in the room growth and decay of sound energy in the room and the last step is the deduction of sebeng's formula using these three steps we will calculate the equation for reverberation time in sebeng's formula using growth and decay method so the first step is determination of incident and absorbed sound energy rates for that let us consider let us consider a room a large room so that the sound energy produced inside that room will be distributed in all the directions so in that room let us consider a small elemental surface ds so what are the assumptions let us consider a big hall let us consider a big hall and so source of sound produces sound in it let us consider a big hall 
and the source produces sound in that room or in, in that hall. Now let us calculate the sound energy incident. Sound energy incident on the small surface elemental area ds. In that room let us consider a ball ab. ab is a ball. So hey, consider a plain wall ab. In that room let us consider or in that big hall let us consider a wall ab. In that wall ab let us consider a small elemental surface ds. So from the small volume dv in the hall the sound energy incident on that wall or on that particular small elemental surface from the small elemental volume dv small, from the small elemental volume dv this is the small element having volume dv so initially we have considered we have considered a wall ab on which a small elemental surface ds is present and the sound energy is incident from the total volume of the hall but initially we are considering the sound energy coming from a small volume dv okay as shown in that figure let, now let us draw a normal from the center of the element ds here ds is the surface element from this surface element let us draw a normal perpendicular to ds from the center of the ds let us draw a normal perpendicular to ds now also draw two circles with radii r and r plus dr so from this point from the center of ds let us draw two semi circles two semi circles with radius r and r plus dr let us draw two circles two or two semi circles with the radii r and r plus dr from it now draw two radii at angles theta and theta plus d theta draw two radii with the angle theta with the normal let us draw the radii radius r with the angle theta with the normal and the second radius r plus second second radius with the angle theta plus d theta so here this is the angle theta and this small angle is d theta so the total angle will become theta plus d theta so let us draw two radii with the angles theta and theta plus d theta with the normal. So these are the two radii. This is one radius and this is another radius. So these are the two radii with the angles theta and theta plus d theta with the normal. So consider the shaded portion, shaded portion of the area lying between these two radii and between these two circles. Now consider the area shaded shaded between the between these two radii and between this which is covered between these two circles. That is nothing but the small volume element dv. Okay. So now let us calculate the volume of that small element for that let us consider the arc length of this shaded area this is the radius r this is the radius r and this is the angle d theta so here the arc length will become r d theta so this is the radius r and the and the angle between these two lines is d theta so the arc length arc length will become r d theta let us assume this volume as three dimensionally let us assume the three dimensional volume so that the arc length of this element will become r d theta arc length of the element so what is the radial length radial length so up to this it is r 
and this is the additional radial length it is dr dr so this is the radius r and the extension of r is dr this is the radial element or radial length now the surface area of this element will be obtained by multiplying these two multiplying the arc length and the radial length so r d theta it is r d theta r d theta into dr will give the surface area surface area of this element dv so the surface area of the element is given by the product of these two arc length and the radial length so r d theta dr is the surface area of the element which we have considered now now let us consider this shaded elemental area that shaded elemental area is rotated with the angle d phi the shaded elemental area is rotated through a small angle d phi about the normal so that small elemental area elemental area is rotated about the normal with the angle d phi okay and the radius of the rotation so if we consider this is r this is r and here angle d t theta so this side will become r sin theta so here this volume is this element is rotating about the normal with the angle d phi here the angle is d phi the volume element is rotating about the normal with the angle d phi and with the radius r sin theta so radius of rotation is r sin theta the volume element is rotating with the radius r sin theta because that side is opposite to the opposite to the theta okay now these two are perpendicular to one another so the hypotenuse value is r so this side will become r sin theta so the radius of rotation is r sin theta okay then how much distance will be traveled by this volume element the distance traveled by this area will become the product of the product of the radius and the angle so the distance traveled by the element the distance traveled by the element can be given by the product of these two product of these two product of the radius and the angle between them so we have obtained the distance traveled by the by the element now let us write the formula for volume traced out by this aerial element volume traced out by this aerial element so the volume covered covered by this volume element will be given by the product of the surface area of the element and the distance traveled by the area the volume of the element the volume covered by that the volume covered by that element can be given by the product of surface area of that element that is r d theta dr the surface area of the element is r d theta dr and the distance covered the distance traveled by this area is r sin theta d phi so by multiplying these two we will get the volume of that small element that is dv so dv is r square here r into r r square sin theta d theta dr and d phi so this is the value of the volume of the small element dv okay so we have calculated the volume of this element now let us consider the sound energy sound energy present in that volume let e be the sound energy density let us consider capital e be the sound energy density energy density means energy per unit volume energy density means energy per unit volume is called the energy density okay then the sound energy present in this volume element dv so capital e is the energy density in the big hall is the total energy density in the big hall 
then what is the sound energy present in that small volume that will become E into D. So the sound energy present in that volume element will be the product of the energy density into the small volume of that element D. So E D V will become the amount of sound energy present in that a volume element. So by substituting the value of D V E into R square sin theta D theta D R D phi is the value of D V which we have calculated already. So substitute the value of D V. We will obtain the sound energy present in this volume element. So this this is the volume element D V. So the sound energy present in that volume element is given by that equation. Now this sound energy from the volume travels uniformly in the uh, in all the directions. Initially we have considered that the sound energy produced inside the room is distributed is uh, distributed uniformly throughout the room. So the sound travels in all the directions uniformly. So the sound energy from the volume travels uniformly in all the directions. So the energy present in the small volume element is E D. Now let us calculate the energy travelling per unit solid angle along any direction. The energy travelling per unit solid angle. The solid angle the solid angle per year sphere is 4 pi. Now here the energy travelling per unit solid angle means we will divide that the energy present in that volume by 4 pi. Then we will get the sound energy per unit solid angle. So that is equal to E dV by 4 pi. So substitute the value of dV. We will get this equation. This is the amount of sound energy travelling per unit solid angle in any direction. Okay. Now after that. But the solid angle subtended by ds at dv. So here ds is here and this is dv. This is a three dimensional, three dimensional volume element. So the, the volume, the solid angle subtended by ds, the solid angle subtended by ds at dv. The solid angle subtended by ds at dv is given by this equation. In this equation, ds cos theta is the component of ds. ds cos theta is the component of ds which is perpendicular to dv. In this formula, the numerator ds cos theta is the component of ds which is perpendicular to the volume dv by square of the distance of that volume element from the surface will give the will give the solid angle subtended by ds at the volume dv okay so this is the formula for solid angle subtended by ds at d okay now the amount of sound energy that reaches ds from dv so what is the amount of sound energy that reaches ds from this volume element dv it will be given by the product of product of the energy traveling per unit solid angle into the product of these two that is first one is the energy traveling per unit solid angle and the second one is the solid angle subtended by this ds at a dv by multiplying these two we will get the sound energy that reaches ds from the, from the volume element dv. So substitute the value of dv here. So this formula E dv by 4 pi and ds cos theta by r square. dv is r square sin theta d theta dr d phi by 4 pi into ds cos theta by r square. Here R square, R square will get cancelled. So E ds sin theta cos theta d theta d phi dr by 4 pi. 
This is the equation for the amount of sound energy that reaches ds, that reaches this small element ds from the volume dv. Okay, the, this equation gives the amount of sound energy that reaches the ds from the small volume dv. If we want to calculate the amount of the total sound energy, the total sound energy received in one second from the entire volume, from the entire volume. Up to now we have calculated from the small volume element dv, the amount of sound energy received from the small L volume element dv. Now if we want to calculate the total amount of sound energy in one second from the entire volume, entire volume that will be obtained by integrating the previous equation integrating the previous equation. So then we will get the total energy. So integrating the equation, so E ds by 4 pi is taken outside of the integral. Here there are three parameters phi, theta and r. Phi value. Phi, phi value changes from 0 to 2 pi. Phi is the angle made by this Phi is the angle made by this volume element with the normal to rotate to re rotate around about the normal. So it will form a hemisphere. It will vary from 0 to 2 pi. So 0 to phi value varies from 0 to 2 pi. And the theta value. Theta value varies from here 0 to pi by 2. Theta is the angle made with the normal. So it varies from 0 to pi by 2. So theta limits are from 0 to pi by 2. Lower limit and the upper limit are 0 and pi by 2. R is equal to 0 to V. R is the distance. Nothing but R is nothing but the distance. So V is the small v here. Small v is the velocity of sound which is 330 meters per second. That means 330, the sound energy which is present up to the 330 meters will reach the surface ds in one second. If, if the distance is more than 330 meters, it will reach ds in the next another second. Okay, so r value varies from 0 to v. Here v is the distance, that is 330 meters. So r varies, varies from 0 to v. These are the three parameters sin theta, cos theta, d theta, d phi, dr. Now integrate e ds by 4 pi will remain the same. R value from r is equal to 0 to v. So if we integrate we will get v, v here. And if we integrate the value of phi we will get 2 pi here. And now theta values are remained. Integral theta is equal to 0 to pi by 2 sin theta cos theta d theta. Here pi will get cancelled. Pi, pi will get cancelled. And this is the formula sin theta cos theta. If we multiply with 2 and divide with 2, then this 2 will get cancelled. If we multiply this with 2 and divide with 2, then this 2 will get cancelled with this 2. Then in the in the integral you will get 2 sin theta cos theta d theta. Which is the formula for sin 2 theta. Sin 2 theta d theta. But the value of this integral theta is equal to 0 to pi by 2 sin 2 theta d theta is 1. So the value of this integral is 1. So we will get E V D S by 4. E is the energy, total energy density. V, small v is the, uh, small v is the velocity of sound. D S is the surface area of the small element D S. So this is the total sound energy present in the room. Total present, total sound energy present in the room. Now let us consider Small a is the absorption coefficient of the wall AB. Absorption coefficient. Absorption coefficient can be represented as 
Absorption coefficient is represented by small a. Absorption coefficient is the ratio of the amount of sound energy absorbed by the surface to the amount of sound energy incident on the surface. It is the ratio of amount of sound energy absorbed by the surface to the amount of sound energy incident on the surface. So if we consider small a is the absorption coefficient of the wall AB, then what will be the sound energy absorbed per unit time? What will be the sound energy absorbed by that wall per unit time? We will multiply this sound energy with the absorption coefficient small a. From this total sound energy, if we want to calculate the amount of sound energy absorbed, we will multiply with absorption coefficient of small a. Okay, this is the absorption of the single wall capital A B. Single wall A B. The rule is the room is having so many walls, so that the total sound energy absorbed by all wall surfaces in the hall will be obtained by summation of A into sigma A into D S. That is sigma A D S. By summing all the absorption coefficients, E V by four absorption, summing all the absorption of all the surfaces, E V by four into sigma A D S, where sigma A D S is represented by capital A. That is total sound absorption. We have discussed in the topic of sound absorption. In the sound absorption topic, we have discussed that sigma A D S. Or sigma A S that means A one S one plus A two S two and so on can be equal to capital A, which is sound absorption. So here we can substitute capital A here. E V A by four. E V A by four is the total sound energy absorbed by the all wall surfaces in the hall. So if we have calculated, if we have calculated as per the heading, we can we have determined the Amount of sound energy incident on the walls and the amount of sound energy absorbed by the walls. So we have calculated the amount of sound energy incident on the wall surfaces and we have calculated the amount of sound energy absorbed by those wall surfaces. This is the first step. So in the next step, we will calculate the growth and decay of the energy. So in the second step, we will calculate the growth and decay of the sound energy in the room. For that, let us consider P. P be the power of the sound source. There is a source which is producing sound in that room. Now let us consider the power of that source is P. P is the power of the sound source, and capital V is the volume of the hall. These are the primary assumptions. P is the power of the source, and capital V is the volume of the hall. Then the total energy, then the total energy in the hall at a particular instant, when the energy density E, when the energy density E will be equal to how much? The total sound energy at a particular instant. What is the amount of what is the amount of total energy present in that room? That will be given by multiplying the energy density and the volume. Energy density we have already assumed the we have already considered the energy density as capital E previously. So energy density means energy per unit volume. So capital E is the energy density in that room. Capital V is the volume. Then the total amount of sound energy per you um but at a particular instant when the energy density E will be is equal to E into V energy density into volume of the hall. Now what is the rate of growth of energy in the hall? What is the change change in that uh, energy sound energy rate of growth of energy in the hall will be. Rate of growth means d by dt of e. So since volume of the hall is unchanged, v remains constant. 
So V into the rate of change will be in the energy only. So V into D by dt. That is the rate of growth of energy. So how we will obtain the rate of growth of uh, energy in the hall? How we will get the growth of energy? If we know the if we know what is the rate of supply of energy from the source, what is the rate of supply of energy from the source, if we know what is the amount of energy coming from the source, that is called the rate of supply of energy. Rate means per unit time. Rate of supply of energy from the source and if we subtract the amount of absorption, the, if we subtract the amount of sound energy absorbed by all the surfaces in the hall, then we will get the rate of growth of energy in the hall. If we know, if we want to calculate the growth of energy in the hall, that will be obtained by the rate of supply of energy from the source minus rate of absorption of all the surfaces in the hall. So, what is the rate of growth of energy in the hall? That is V into DE by DT. That is equal to rate of supply of energy of from the source. That is nothing but the power from the source. P. P is P minus rate of absorption of all the surfaces in the hall. We have calculated in the first step. That is EVA by 4. So, by, substitute, by subtracting this amount of sound energy absorbed by the surfaces from the power of the source, we will obtain the rate of growth of energy in the hall. In this second step, we will discuss growth and decay of sound energy in the room. So, the rate, uh, rate of growth of energy in the room or in the hall can be given by subtracting by subtracting the rate of absorption of all the surfaces in the hall from the rate of supply of energy from the source. So the equation is rate of growth of energy in the hall is V into DE by DT is equal to power of the source minus absorption in the hall. So this equation gives the rate of growth of energy in the hall. So from that equation we can write as dE by dt plus Va by 4V. So this equation came from V into dE by dt. V into dE by dt is equal to P minus EVA by 4. This is the equation we have. V into dE by dt is equal to power of the source P minus absorption EVA by 4. In this equation, divide the whole equation with capital V. This V will be cancelled. So, we will get dE by dt. Bring this minus term to, to LHS. Then we will get VA by 4V into E. That is equal to P by V. So, this equation 3 can be obtained. Now, let us consider this VA by 4V. VA by 4V is equal to alpha. Let us consider VA by 4V is equal to alpha. And from this, from this equation, 1 by V is equal to 4 alpha into 4 alpha by V into A. So, we can substitute 1 by V. So, in this uh, RHS, in the place of 1 by V, we can substitute 4 alpha by V A. And in LHS, in the place of V A by 4 V, we can substitute alpha in equation 3. Now, multiply Multiply on both sides with e power alpha t on both sides of the above equation, we will get so LHS term into e power alpha t that is equal to 4p by dA alpha into e power alpha t. 
by multiplying e power alpha t into the bracket this can be written as derivative of e into e power alpha t this is of the form of derivative of e into e power alpha t and this term remains the same so now integrating on both sides of the above equation integrating on both sides of the above equation we will get on integration this differentiation will be cancelled then we will get e into e power alpha t is equal to 4p by va into integral of alpha e power alpha t will become e power alpha t plus k is the k is the integration constant so k is the constant of integration by applying the boundary conditions we can find out the value of k so growth of the energy density growth of the energy density so let us consider t if t is measured from the instant of sound source emits the sound the initial condition is time is equal to zero energy is equal to zero initially initially the amount of the energy of the sound is zero at t is equal to zero this is the boundary this is the initial condition so by substituting this condition in equation 4 what is equation 4 equation 4 is e into e power alpha t is equal to 4 p by v a e power alpha t plus k by substituting the boundary conditions in this equation that is that is p is equal to 0 t is equal to 0 so what is the in this equation e is equal to 0 e is equal to 0 and t is equal to 0 so this term will become 0 when t is equal to 0 e power 0 will become 1 then k will become minus 4p by va so by substituting this initial condition or the boundary condition in this equation 4 we will get the k value as k is equal to minus 4p by va by substituting this boundary condition or the initial condition in equation 4 we will get the k value like this so now substitute this k value in the equation k value in the equation 4 then we will get what is the equation 4 equation 4 is e is equal to 4p by va into e power alpha t plus k okay what is equation 4 so that is e into e power alpha t e into e power alpha t that is equal to 4p by va into e power alpha t e power alpha t plus k so now in this equation substituting k is equal to minus 4p by va that is equal to 4p by va into e power alpha t minus 4p by va minus 4p by va now taking 4p by va as common that is equal to 4p by va into 1 by 1 uh, e power alpha t minus 1 we will get 4p by va into e power alpha t minus 1 this value will become e into e power alpha t. now divide the whole equation with e power alpha t then we will get e is equal to 4p by va into e power alpha t by e power alpha t will become 1 minus 1 by e power alpha t will become e power minus alpha t then we will obtain this equation so by substituting the value of k and on simplification we will get the value of 
energy as 4 p by v a into 1 minus e power minus r t. Now let us consider this 4 p by v a as e m. E suffix m. Capital E suffix m. So 4 p by v a is e m. Now substituting this value e m here we will get e is equal to e m into e power e m into 1 minus e power minus r for t. So from this equation we can say that this indication this equation indicates that the sound energy density grows in an exponential manner. The sound energy density grows in an exponential manner. Here if we observe the energy and t the energy increases in exponential exponential manner. EM, EM is the steady energy density. Okay. Ex exponential manner with respect to time t. It increases till it attains the steady state value EM. So it increases up to up to certain up to which time it may be at infinity at the, at the time infinity it may be equal to the EM that is the steady state value of energy density. Okay like that we can calculate the growth of the energy density. Next we will calculate the decay of energy density. Decay of energy density that means if after reaching the steady state energy density value the sound energy, if the source of sound is stopped, stopped, then the sound decays. Let us see here. Let the source is cut off. Source is cut off. That means source is stopped. The source stopped producing the sound. When E has reached the maximum value of EM. So E has, e has reached the value EM here, steady state energy density. Where E is equal to EM is equal to 4 P by V A. So that since the source is stopped, P is equal to 0. And we are considering that here the time has started. P is equal to 0 here. P is equal to 0. We are counting the time from the second from which the source has stopped. So at the value of E is equal to EM, P is equal to 0. So at initially when the source is stopped the time is 0. From equation 5, what is equation 5? What will be the equation 5? Equation 5 is equation 5 is E is equal to EM into 1 minus e power minus alpha t. So this is the equation 5. So in the decay energy density e is equal to em into 1 minus e power minus alpha t. It is equation 5. So from the equation 5 what is the value of em? EM is equal to 4P by VA. EM is equal to 4P by VA. So, from this equation, as since P is equal to 0, we can obtain E into E power alpha T will become EM. So, since P is equal to 0 at T is equal to 0, when time T is equal to 0, and time t is equal to 0 and p is 0 then we will get e into e power alpha t is equal to em or by taking e power alpha t to this side it will come to the denominator and if we take it to the numerator it will become e power minus alpha t. So we will get the equation as e is equal to em into e power minus alpha t. This is the decay equation. So the energy decays exponentially with respect to time. So this equation shows that the decay of energy density with time after the source is cut off 
this uh, this decay is uh, shown by the exponential curve exponential decay is also exponential so we have calculated the growth of the energy density and the decay of the energy density so we have completed the two parts in the servants formula calculation second part is growth and decay of sound energy density and the third part is deduction of servants formula so in the third part deduction of servants formula reverberation time reverberation time can be t can be defined as the time taken taken for the sound energy density to fall from its steady value to its 1 millionth of 1 millionth value that means the time taken by the sound to decay 1 millionth of its initial intensity that is called the reverberation time so here em is the steady state value then e by em will become e power 10 power minus 6 for reverberation time the time which is equal to reverberation time at reverberation time the ratio of these two will become 10 power minus 6 so but we have e by em is equal to e power minus alpha t previously we have the decay equation e is equal to em into e power minus alpha t so e by em is e power minus alpha t but that is equal to 10 power minus 6 so we are If here there are minus e power minus alpha t is equal to 10 power minus 6. So we can write e power alpha t is equal to 10 power 6. So we can equate the we can equate the powers. So alpha t is equal to, by by applying log log base e on both sides by applying log base e on both sides here log e base e will become what we will obtain alpha t here log 10 base e power 6 6 6 will come to here so 6 log 10 log base e 10 so from this t is equal to 6 log 10 base e by alpha by alpha so what is meant by alpha we know that alpha is equal to va by 4v since alpha is equal to va by 4 v substituting alpha value v a by 4 v comes to the numerator then here we have 6 log 10 base e so log 10 base e can be converted into log e base e by multiplying with 2.3026 so we will have 4 into 6 into 2.3026 into capital v that is the volume of the volume of the hall Here small v represents the velocity of sound, which is 330 meters per second. So here capital A is the absorption. By substituting all these values, we can obtain capital T is equal to 0.165 v by capital A. So this is nothing but the formula for reverberation time, which we have deducted. This is the final formula for the Sabine's formula. so from this equation what are the conclusions this equation is called the sabine's formula for reverberation time from this equation we can say that reverberation time is directly proportional to the volume of the auditorium capital v t is directly proportional to capital v volume of the auditorium and it is inversely proportional to surface areas of sound absorption so reverberation time is inversely proportional to surface areas of sound absorption and it is inversely proportional to total absorption it is inversely proportional to total absorption capital a okay thus we can uh, we can discuss about the sabine's formula later the next topic is absorption coefficient and its measure measurements what is the definition of absorption coefficient absorption coefficient can be defined as it is the ratio of sound energy absorbed by the surface to the sound total sound energy incident on the surface 
So it is the ratio of the amount of sound energy absorbed by the surface to the total sound energy incident on the surface. So what are the units of absorption coefficient Sabine or open window unit or the SI units for the absorption coefficient. So Sabine scientist he selected an open window as a perfect absorber of sound. If we consider an open window in a room, it can be considered as a perfect absorber of sound. Why? Because the total sound energy incident on the open window can be completely absorbed. It cannot be reflected back. So it can be considered as a perfect absorber of sound. So if the absorption coefficient of a material depends on frequency of the sound also. Absorption coefficient small a depends on the frequency of sound also. If the frequency of sound is more, absorption is also more. So absorption coefficient can be determined using two methods. So first method is based on the determination of reverberation times. Based on the reverberation times, we can find out the absorption coefficient. So let us consider a room. Initially there are no absorbing materials. Then let us consider the reverberation time of the room is T1. So T1 is the reverberation time without the sample inside the room. So without any sample inside the room. The room is having no absorbing material. Then the reverberation time is T1. Later T2 is the reverberation time when the absorbing material is present in the room. So let us place one absorbing material inside the room and then the reverberation time of the room is T2. So we know that from the Sabine's formula, we know that from the Sabine's formula, what is the Sabine's formula? Sabine's formula, we know that 1 by, we know that T is equal to 0 0.165 V by A. It is the Sabine's formula. So 1 by T will become 1 by T is equal to A by 0 0.165 V. So let us consider 1 by T1. T1 is the reverberation time of the hall without any absorbing material. It is capital A by 0 0.165 V. Capital A means sigma AS. Now 1 by T2 means we have placed one absorbing material who is uh, having absorption coefficient A1 and surface area S1. So the reverberation time of that room after placing the material is T2. Now here A1 is the absorption coefficient of the material of surface area S and capital V is the volume of the cup. Now substituting, now subtracting these two equations, subtracting these two equations we will get. So, subtracting the first equation from the second equation, we will get A1 S1 by 0 0.165 V is equal to 1 by T2 minus 1 by T1. So, from this equation, we can write the equation for A1. A1 is the absorption coefficient that of that absorbing material that is equal to 0 0.165 V by S1 into 1 by T2 minus 1 by T1. So by knowing all the values on the LHS and substituting in that equation, we can find out the absorption coefficient of the particular uh, absorbing material using this first method. Okay, in the second method, the second method is, this method consists of finding the times of decay. The second method of determining absorption coefficient depends on the times of decay of the steady energy density to the bare audibility. Bare audibility means the sound is not audible. For the two sources of power outputs P1 and P2 respectively. Let us consider the two sources having power outputs P1 and P2, P2 respectively. So the equation of decay of energy density as we know from the Sabine's derivation E is equal to Em e power minus alpha t. We know that their Em is 4p by Va and alpha is Va by 4v. So all these values uh, we, we have in the Sabine's derivation. In this formula where small v represents the 
velocity of sound and capital V represents the volume of the hall. Capital A represents the total sound absorption that is sigma A into ds. This, this is the total sound absorption of the surfaces. And capital E is the energy density, energy per unit volume of the room. T seconds after the source is cut off. After the source is cut off, the energy density is at time t, the energy density is E. Okay. So now let us consider T1 and T2 are the respective times of decay, times of decay of the energy density E to the where audible limit E0. So initially the sound energy density is E. After time, times of decay T1 and T2, after two sources T1 and T2, the, the sound energy is dropped to, dropped to where audibility limit E0. So of the power of outputs T1 and T2 respectively. Then what will be the equations? In the place of E, E is reduced to E0. E0 is equal to 4 P1 by Va E power minus alpha T1. For the second source, the energy is also D1 and T2 are the times of decay. So dividing equations 1 and 2, 1 by 2. Dividing equations 1 and 2, so 1 by 2, we will get E0, E0 will get cancelled. T1 by T2 will, will become T1 by T2 into E power minus alpha into T1 minus T2. So by reversing this, by taking this to another side, then we will get E power alpha into T1 minus T2. So we will get T1 by T2 is equal to E power alpha into T1 minus T2. Taking log base E on both sides, here log, log E, log E base E will become 1 and we will get only alpha into T1 minus T2. Here we have log T1 by T2 base E. So that is equal to where alpha is Va by 4V into T1 minus T2. So since alpha value is Va by 4V. So from this equation we can write, write the equation for capital A. So only keeping capital A here and, uh, and taking all the terms to this side, we will get 4V log P1 by P2 by small v into P1 minus T2. Where capital A is the total sound absorption, it is equal to the product of absorption coefficient and the surface area. From this we can write the formula for absorption coefficients small a. So this is the equation for absorption coefficient which involves the power outputs of the sources P1 and P2, capital V is the volume of the hall, small v is the velocity of sound, capital S is the surface area, P1 and P2 are the times of decay. So by knowing the times of decay and substituting in this equation we can find out the absorption coefficient. So these are the topics in the acoustics, we can do problems on acoustics. So in this problem, the volume of the hall, capital V, is given, volume of the hall and the area of the wall, 200 meter square and the area of the ceiling, ceiling, floor, floor and ceiling is 100 meter square, area of the floor and ceiling, ceiling each is 100 meter square. If the absorption coefficient of the wall ceiling, absorption coefficients are these respectively, Calculate the reverberation time of the hall. Reverberation time formula is zero, from the Seven's formula 0.165 V by sigma AS. Sigma AS is the summation of product of all the absorption coefficients and surface areas. So A1, S1. So this is the wall, wall absorption coefficient and the wall surface area. Ceiling, ceiling absorption coefficient, ceiling surface area. Floor absorption and floor surface area. By multiplying and adding all these values, we will get the total absorption here. So by substituting the total sigma AS here and volume is given as 475 meter cube. Substituting all these values, we can find out the reverberation time. 
So if we observe in this or in this problem, the hall is having the volume of twelve thousand five hundred meter cube. Reverberation time is one point five seconds. If two hundred cushion chairs are additionally placed in the hall, what will be the new reverberation time of the hall? Initially, they have given the volume capital V, and the reverberation time is also given. So, reverberation time before the chairs are placed. Let us consider the reverberation time is T1. Okay. So, from this we can find out the V is given and T1 is given. So, we can find out sigma AS. So, volume is substituted and the reverberation time is substituted. We can find out the absorption of the hall before the chairs are placed. Is absorption is 1375 square. Uh, 1375 is the absorption. Okay. Now, after adding 200 cushion chairs, having absorption of uh, each is one open window unit. So, additionally, absorption is 200 number into absorption is one open window unit into one. So it will become 200. So absorption is increased by adding the additional absorption to this value and substituting this in this equation. Volume is remains volume remains the same. So by substituting in this formula, we can obtain the new reverberation time after the chairs have placed. So an auditorium has a volume of five thousand meter cube. What should be the total absorption in the hall if the reverberation time of one point two five seconds is to be maintained? So the volume is volume is given. Volume is five thousand meter cube, and reverberation time is one point two five seconds. We have to calculate the total absorption. So in this formula, we have to calculate sigma AS. Sigma AS is equal to 0.165 V by T. So substituting by substituting T V value and V and T values, we can find out the absorption in the absorption in the auditorium. So using the Sabine's formula, we can calculate the we can calculate whatever parameter we need. We, if we, we want to calculate reverberation time, we should know volume and total absorption. Among these three parameters, T, V, and A, if we know the two parameters, we can find out the third parameter. Like that, we can uh, we can do the problems in acoustics. With this, the acoustics chapter is completed, which is the second unit, the first chapter. So, in engineering physics, acoustics chapter can be. Discussed like this.